Hey guys, another Patreon month. Dude, one of the best albums we've ever done. We say that every month, but with this month, we really mean it. Full album, Asia by Steely Dan. Our reaction to one of the best albums of all time. All that for less than a cup of coffee on Patreon. Link in the description. See you there. Hey guys, hope you're having a great day as well as a great life. As well as a great life. For all those people who are like, they don't do long songs. Uh, we do long songs. So you better watch your mouth after this video. Yeah, 17 minutes. Not the longest song we've done. I think there might be one or two still longer than this. I, I think I think so as well. Yeah. Either way, super excited. We, we've been holding out on this one. Everybody who's been asking for it knows this for several, several months, probably even a year or so. We've gotten asked for it a bunch. So now we're doing it in the Gata de Vida. I heard that like the bandmates, like one or a couple of them were like drunk and they were trying to like propound and, or pitch this song to their manager or something and they were drunk. And they were trying to say, like, in the Garden of Eden, but they were like, so it sounded like, in the Garden of Eden, or whatever. And then they're like, honestly, that works. I don't know if that's accurate at all or not. No, but we will but. treat it as gospel for now, because that's a cool story. And, uh, yeah, with that being said, make sure you like and subscribe to the video, and uh, let's get into it. Let's do it. Ooh. Oh, that bass line is fat. Don't you know that I'm loving you In a god of a vida, baby Don't you know that I'll always be true Oh, won't you come with me And I'll take my hand Oh, won't you come In a god of a vita, honey Don't you know that I'm loving you In a god of a vita, baby Don't you know that I'm
Oh. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. like 17 minutes i was just thinking this at the end i was like man a uh, really great long song it's i feel like the telltale marker of it is it doesn't feel long it's like they made 17 minutes feel probably like 10 yeah yeah it didn't feel like 17 but i know time passed <laughs> i do know time has passed <laughs> dude just incredible 
I think the whole thing, vocally, you know, not the most prolific uh, singer ever, but the way that he's inflecting in the Garden of Eden, like in the Garden of Eden or whatever yeah. he's saying, is so iconic. It feels like easily this is why the song blew up. Like it has great instrumentation, but I feel like if it didn't have that in the God of David, where it's like the first time you listen to that, you're yeah. like, oh, this is a moment in history now. Yeah. So I thought that was so, so interesting. How That's crazy. What, what I was thinking, like, and I, I think I agree with you more now, but at first, like my opinion of like the vocals were like literally no opinion, like the most neutral thing. Yeah. But I can definitely see like where that plays a role. Well, I got to and the end of the say. song when I heard because at first I felt the same way. I felt like the the vocals were like inconsequential kind of, and yeah. then it got to the middle of the song and I was like, wow. In my head, I was like, I wonder if there's like a, a if it's like a vocalist as a guy or if it's the, like a, a, the guitar player is also singing. Yeah. Right. Because if it's just a vocalist as a guy, dude, easiest job in the world to just go in the god and then watch the other people play for seventeen minutes. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, then I was like, man. For him to give such impact to a song in such a short amount of time, like he's only got like two little parts in the whole song. Yeah. And I feel like that's the thing that if it's gonna get sampled in movies, it's that part. Now I, I guess for me I felt more that way towards like the main like riff. Yeah. Hey, dude, it almost kinda reminds me a little bit of Hurt in the Grapevine. A little uh, bit, dude. Even parts of it, especially like, towards like the the later I want to say the two thirds mark. Where there's still kind of drum solo going. The keys are kind of coming. You got ambient sounds. It definitely reminded me of Pink Floyd's second album, Sauce Full of Secrets, a little yeah. bit. Um, Have not heard that one. Definitely had a lot of cool like grabs in here of things that it like, reminded you of. But it definitely is like its own thing all around the board. Yeah. But overall, I think the riff is what got me the most because especially like when they like would leave it out for a bit and then whenever it would like come back like subtly. But it's like I hear you. Yeah, the vocals are not the most. Doing. I don't think they're the most important thing. I just think that it was like he added a lot in very little, and I think the guitar, yeah. the guitar line did that too. Yeah. And one of the things I love is the production of it, where it it has like the drum solo start in the left ear, and it they like overlay two takes of the drum solo. I think that's what they did. Two drum takes, uh, two takes of the same solo, and then they slowly pan one of them that way, mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, is this the same solo? I'm just mic twice, or is it's it, and I think it's two different drum solo takes. Mm -hmm. But it's so interesting. And at the end, one of the things I loved is they were doing this like, like this run down. Mm -hmm. On the left side, it was going down. On the right side, it was going up. So at like the beginning of it, the, yeah. the one that was starting up high, you heard it more, so it felt mm -hmm. louder. And then by the time it got lower, you couldn't hear it as much. Mm -hmm. And the other one felt the opposite. So it started lower, so you mm -hmm. couldn't hear it as much. And then it got higher. And then so it like, it like traded the yeah. impact of it. It was so well produced. And how old is this song? I think it's like late 60s. Gosh, that's incredible. Here, view album. 1968. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, this is a 36 minute album with six songs, and this definitely carries the majority of it. Yeah. That was intense, man. Yeah. Overall, it's like, I guess I feel like if you want to just kind of like trance out for a bit, it does the job. Yeah. No, most certainly. I'm feeling an A. Plus. Yeah. I'm feeling a very strong A. Plus. I feel like it did a lot for 68, man. Yeah. Precipice to me of S tier. I think it did a shit ton. I, I think especially like given the time period, it definitely feels like it's kind of like that psychedelic prog type thing. And I think definitely like the guitarist, that feels like a staple of how you want to develop like a guitar solo. Just like what he did and the way he utilized like yeah. his fuzz and his tone. Like if you're gonna like play guitar for a hot minute, you got to kind of develop it in a way. And I feel like he did it in the best possible way, given the genre, given like what they were doing. Yeah, I thought it was a, a great use of it because it's super easy for any song above five minutes. Honestly, if you're playing a guitar solo that's like two minutes and above, yeah, it's so easy for it to get repetitive and boring. Yeah. So or sound like you're rambling. Yeah. But none of that here. None, none of that none here. Of that. So and none of that and heard it in the grapevine either. Yeah. Nope. So I don't know. Either way, Crazy. really, really great song. Um, I guess let us know. Do we need to do more Iron Butterfly and? I'm curious what you guys thought when it first came out. Did it feel like anything else at the time? Did it feel groundbreaking? Um, and what do you guys think of the vocals? How important were those? So I'm just curious. All Probably around. iconic, like you're saying. Yeah, but who knows? Maybe maybe it wasn't that. We're only hearing it in retrospect. So yeah, let us know. With that being said, uh, we'll see you in the next video.